Why were the Indian Institutes of Technology created? Well, according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's vision, they were created to nurture individuals who would go on to make India self-sufficient when it came to technological needs. Over time, the Indian Institutes of Technology have established themselves as prominent tech institutes, not just in the country, but across the world. What started off as a few teaching institutes in isolated corners of the country have now become centers for scientific advancement. Research programs are progressing like never before. New facilities are coming up uh, to, to meet the demands, the growing demands for innovation. However, in spite of all of this, it seems to me that we are forgetting about Nehru's vision. Maybe it's time for a reminder. To almost any Indian, the IITs are a brand for higher education. Just last year, over 12 lakh students wrote the JE mains, with a mere 11,000 making it through the final hurdle and getting into the one and getting into one of the IITs. Now, these students have the potential to be pioneers of the future. So what role do the IITs play in realizing this potential? It's teaching. In living up to Nehru's vision, I simply cannot overstate the importance of teaching. Unfortunately, in today's academic landscape, I'm afraid that the focus has shifted away from it. But that doesn't mean to say that the current system isn't doing too well. Don't get me wrong, the present system works. But what I would like to point out is that there is room for improvement. We can do better. After all, isn't that what the IITs have always been about? Improvement. When I began my college life as a freshman at IIT Bombay, I was super excited. I was at one of the best institutes in the country. My expectations were really high. However, upon arriving here, things weren't as they seemed. Now, for those of you all who are unfamiliar with the freshman curriculum here at the IITs, incoming students from all departments are required to take courses from the basic sciences. Classes here are very different from high school. There are lectures taught by professors, and there are problem-solving sessions taught by a senior student, also known as a TA, short for teaching assistant. Now, all this sounds like a reasonable arrangement, but it has its own problems. Back in first year, I remember being very fond of science and math. But sadly, I found myself losing motivation because of these problem-solving sessions. They were very boring, largely due to uninspiring TAs. I was one of many to crib about this issue. But the more I spoke about this to my peers, the more it felt like this problem seemed systemic. Today, after having been a TA for six courses, and after having seen the other side of the story, I believe that this problem can be attributed to a general lack of focus towards training students in teaching. But TAs aren't the only teachers in the institute. What about professors? Well, professors have a complicated job. They're teachers, researchers, and almost equivalently, administrators too. From a young age, I always told myself that there will invariably be a fair share of good and bad teachers in every institution, be it school or university. However, for the kind of institutes that we are discussing here, I feel there's a more systemic cause for the lack of good teachers. Upon giving this idea a fair bit of thought, I realize that it boils down to asking the question that's often asked these days. From the perspective of the institute, what's more important? Is it research or teaching?
As someone who wants to stay in academia, I've asked around quite a bit as to what it takes to become a professor. Well, you need to get a PhD, then a postdoc, then there's faculty recruitment, tenure, promotions, and so on. But at every juncture, what they only look at is research. How many research publications do you have? Which journals are they published in? How many times have your papers been cited? The aspect of teaching, its quality, quantity, impact, holds no relevance whatsoever here. In fact, nobody seems to care nearly enough about teaching. It's like learning to teach is voluntary at best. And frankly, this bothered me a lot. As an institute that aims to train the next generation of scientists, engineers, and technologists, how can we not have people that are formally trained in the art of teaching? The primary, the primary goal of research is to discover new knowledge, while that of teaching is to impart existing knowledge. Which brings us to the key difference between the skill sets required for research and teaching. Communication. To be able to communicate is a desirable trait, but is not necessary to be a good researcher. On the other hand, good communication skills are imperative to being a good teacher. Some of the most eminent scientists in history, take for example Gibbs or Einstein, are well known for how obscure their lectures were. But their lack of clarity in presentation in no way diminished their stature as researchers. However, an outstanding teacher that cannot, that cannot communicate is just not possible. Good research and good teaching takes a lot of time. Doing both takes more time than most professors have. It's no secret that research is a major time sink. It requires large, uninterrupted chunks of time to define problems, to plan a method of attack, to clean up logical flaws, to write papers, and on top of all that, to train graduate students in each one of the aspects I just mentioned. Under any circumstance, this is a full-time job. And to do it well enough to gain international recognition, now that requires a level of effort that tolerates very few distractions. Making up problems is another time-intensive task. Students learning concepts in the class is only half the job. For, for true learning to take place, problems must be solved. That too of varying difficulty. Some should be aimed at solidifying basic concepts. Others should be aimed at introducing new information to previous existing knowledge, and the rest should challenge the creativity of the best students in your class. Relatively few textbooks offer problems that provide the necessary variety. The burden is almost always on the professor to collect problems from several sources. Naturally, this takes a significant amount of time. In fact, in my personal experience, this problem is so severe that in many courses, examination papers and questions are simply repeated year after year. What this does is it instills an unhealthy, cal an un an unhealthy culture in students to somehow get their hands on question papers of the previous years and then ace exams by memorizing the solutions to those. I mean, if our aim is to train students to become engineers, that is to master the art of creative problem solving. Is this really the way to go? Of course, a direct rebuttal to all of my claims would be that most of the students are not interested from the start. Why should the professor put in so much work in the first place? Their time is better spent on other important rewarding activities like research or external projects. After all, the current system isn't doing too badly. I mean, Students figure out a way to get what they want and end up in relatively good places, right? But the point is, there is a lot of hidden potential that's not being tapped into. Agreed, there are a lot of factors into this. Uh, most students don't know what engineering is before they're actually here. 
they take a leap of faith and just join whichever department they get into. Many others are forced by their parents to join here because of the potentially high paying jobs. But at the end of the day, as someone who aspires to become an educator in the future, I believe that the onus is on the teacher to inspire students and make them capable learners. My own story is a testament to the fact that good teachers can be life changing. About five years ago, I joined IIT Bombay as a mechanical engineering student. And although I was constantly exploring different opportunities, I was largely undecided on what I wanted to do in the longer run. Interestingly, in my case, courses led the way. It's a surprise. I enjoyed most of my courses, but there was one that really stood out to me. Classical mechanics. I was instantly drawn to the beauty of the subject, primarily because of the mathematics that was embedded in it. After realizing that I would need to, I would need to learn a lot of math to understand this stuff, I decided to change my major to mathematics. And that decision, in my opinion, has quite literally decided the fate of my academic career. Today, I can't even imagine what, what I'd be doing had I not been in that class with that amazing teacher who opened my eyes to the disguised mathematics that was present in classical mechanics. I genuinely believe that a majority of faculty members are concerned about students and would like to be great teachers. But given the present lopsided academic reward system and the limited number of hours a day, most settle for being adequate. There are, however, a number of steps that could significantly impact the teaching program of the Institute without sacrificing the research component. To start with, uh, departments could recruit a small proportion of specialized faculty members who excel in teaching and educational scholarship. This can then be complemented with setting up Institute-backed faculty training programs and establishing reward systems that bring teaching on a, level, on a level footing with research. On a more hands-on perspective, curriculum design needs to be revised periodically to keep up with the changing academic trends. Teaching material and books need to be well curated with the audience in mind. Note that doing any of this requires an in-depth understanding of pedagogy, especially in the context of IIT's educational topography. And this understanding can only be achieved through pointed research at teaching and through conferences that facilitate discourse needed to make these institutional changes. Of course, all this is easier said than done. It will take a serious commitment of resources and a major change in attitude by both the institute as a whole and by professors as individuals. But the benefits to the students are evident. In fact, the ultimate beneficiaries would be the larger Indian society that these students would go on to impact. I believe that the IITs owe it to themselves, their vision, and to our society to consider these suggestions in earnest and invest in whatever it takes to get there. Thank you.